raise your right hand. You swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, have a seat right here. Actually not. Uh, actually be about a foot away from it. Uh, it can overwhelm the record uh, if you talk too closely into it. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Can you please have your full name for the record? Senator Wendy Rogers. Um, and uh, as uh, you just indicated, I believe you're a member of the Arizona Senate? That's correct. Uh, um, Senator Rogers, you know why we're here today, but just so we have a good, clean record, uh, we're here today because you obtained an ex parte injunction against harassment against Ms. Cameron Sanchez. That's correct. Is she here in the courtroom here today? Yes. Is she seated at the defense table with counsel? Yes. All right. I realize that we're here really to focus on specific incidents of harassment <coughs> alleged in your petition, but I do think it would be helpful for the court if the, the court understood the, the history of your dealings with Ms. Sanchez. And so if I could, I would like to start with an incident back in January of 2022 involving yourself, Ms. Sanchez, on the Senate floor. Could you please tell us what happened there? I was reminded by a, a tweet <coughs> that I recently uh, stumbled across that uh, helped me remember the fact that in January of 2022, Ms. Sanchez uh, approached my table on the Senate floor and tried to question me. Uh, the rules of engagement are that once the gavel falls and the Senate session is over for the day, reporters can approach us at our table. Um, I did not appreciate her questions. They, can, they cannot approach you at your table once the gavel hit. I missed what you said. They can approach. They can approach. Yes, sir. Okay. Once the gavel falls. Once the gavel and falls. the session is over for the day. Okay. Yes, sir. So she approached me as is custom, and uh, the questions were uh, inappropriate, uncomfortable for me at the time. I did not appreciate her approach. I asked the staff to have her not approach me anymore. Well, can you explain what her demeanor was like to you in asking those questions? I was un made uncomfortable by my Face, as it were, being invaded. Uh, I did not feel uh, comfortable in terms of I felt that she was imposing herself upon me and in my work area. And so I said I did not want to be questioned by her again, and I told the staff to instruct her accordingly. And is it fair to say during this particular encounter you felt as though your physical space had been invaded? Object to form leading. It is leading. Uh, the rules of evidence don't exactly apply in this type of proceeding, uh, but I get better information if, uh, if the witness is testifying rather than counsel. Yeah, I'm happy to rephrase. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Senator Rogers, could, could you uh, please explain, uh, you know, what Ms. Sanchez did relative to your own personal space during that encounter uh, in January of 2022? And actually, Your Honor, I'm going to take again, not necessarily with respect to the rules of evidence, but the, as you're aware, Your Honor, this, the proceedings today are limited to the scope of the petition that was filed and the hearing that took place on April 19th. Well, let me flip to the petition. I, I remember there was reference, well, not to the January 22. Uh, you know, the rules of protective order procedure do limit uh, testimony to uh, and evidence presented to what is alleged in the petition. So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to sustain that objection unless you have a, a response. Yeah, Judge, if I could, I, I believe the rule you're citing has to do with the actual incidents of harassment themselves, meaning you, you can't come forward with new incidents of harassment that aren't in the petition. What I'm just doing here is maybe merely adding some, some color to the relationship between the parties. Yeah. And, and Your Honor, the, the whole issue is precisely that, this notion of adding color, that which is contained in the petition on page two of the petition, well, first of all, question number four, tell the judge what happened and why you need this order. Defendant will receive it. Um, if there's a contested hearing, a judge can consider only what you write here. And on page two, uh, there's one entry from 2022, which I presume is the issue being discussed for January 2022. In 2022, Ms. Sanchez was verbally forbidden to approach me at the Arizona Senate. Yeah, I think that's it. it. That's all that's contained in the petition, Your Honor. That limits the scope of that which could be discussed at this hearing. Judge, judge, the liberty 
who stopped working? Oh, our, our, our record stopped. It needs to be rehabilitated. It was working this morning. <laughs> and it's old. If the press could take note of that. <laughs> So should I actually have her uh, witness to? Okay. Actually, I'm being told that this should move a little closer to you, maybe six inches. Sorry, mm -hmm. we've had it. We've had experiences where people talk right in the mic, and then we can't make a, a record of the hearing. So that's what I was fearing. But it's uh, attorneys are not near the mic. Uh, do you want me to have them? Well, he's walking around. Do you want me to have him question from his desk? The mic's uh, not right there as long as oh, that mic. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If they move, perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'm hearing that uh, the Zoom call is not necessarily not necessarily picking up everything you're saying. So, question from close to a mic. You're whatever you're comfortable with. I don't. It doesn't bother. It doesn't matter to me. We're on. Okay. The ru the rule referenced is Rule 36 of the uh, Rules of Protective Order Procedure. It says the court must limit the scope of the hearing to the allegations of the petition. The petition does reference. Uh, the events that the witness is talking about, and so I'm going to overrule the objection, and uh, you can go. You can go forward. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Honor. And I, I maybe uh, can't remember what my last question was, but if you could explain, going back to this incident of January of 2022, that's referenced in your petition, um, uh, how did you feel relative to uh, Miss Sanchez and your personal space during that incident? To answer your question, I felt that my personal space was being violated and imposed upon and I was not comfortable therefore I instructed the staff to tell her to not approach me anymore after session would be over on a daily basis and are you know if that message was communicated to Ms. Sanchez I do not know specifically but I presumed that it had been uh, by her not having approached me again throughout the rest of the uh, session. We start in January, we go into June. And, and it, during that January of 2022 incident, did you yourself communicate anything to Ms. Sanchez signaling that you did not wish to communicate with her or engage with her? I did at that, uh, on that date uh, when she approached and I did not want to be questioned. I told her I did not want to be questioned and then uh, thereupon, I instructed the staff to also reinforce that with her. 
let's now go to, to February of 2023. Uh, it's my understanding there was another incident between yourself and Ms. Sanchez on the Senate floor. Please tell us what happened there, ma'am. I was surprised that she would approach me since we had established the standard the year before. And so when she approached me, I believe it was on a Monday in late February, I was uh, gathering my belongings and she strode right up into my personal space. I sit in the very back row now. So I'm in the very back of the Senate floor and, I, and staff people tend to congregate around there as well. So when she strode toward me and said uh, something to the effect of, I want to talk to you about your Senate Elections Committee, I thought to myself, well, I will just continue to put my belongings together because she should know better than to have approached me. And then another question was posed by her. As I was gathering my belongings, she said, did you take bribes? At that point, I was speechless. I looked at the public relations professional we have on staff, Ms. Uh, Kim Quintero, and then she looked at Ms. Sanchez and said something to the effect of Senator Rogers put out a press release under the uh, uh, Arizona Senate yesterday evening, Sunday evening, that answers all questions related to the Senate Elections Committee. And at this point, there were, I think, three staff members kind of gathering around me to assist. And Ms. Sanchez would not leave my desk. What happened next? I was, again, incredulous that she was still there. So I looked at her and I said, you're dismissed. Now, Senator Rogers, you're, you're a veteran as am I. What did you mean to communicate uh, to Ms. Sanchez by saying you're dismissed? When you say you're dismissed to someone, it's the final remark you say to someone to convey that the business at hand is over and you need to vacate the premises. Uh, what happened after you told her you're dismissed? She did finally back off, and then a few hours later, as I was driving away from the Capitol, I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with each of the three staff members who at that point had congregated around the situation. I spoke one-on-one -on -one with a sergeant at arms, I spoke one-on-one -on -one with uh, Ms. Quintero, and I spoke one-on-one -on -one with the Deputy Chief of Staff, Grant Hanna. And in each of those conversations, on my way out, I said, did we not make ourselves clear here that last year Ms. Sanchez was told not to approach me anymore and now we have this problem again this year. And in each of those cases, each of the staff members Jackson, said... Call for hearsay. Uh, hearsay, is, hearsay is allowed in this uh, proceeding. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Please continue, ma'am. In each of those conversations, each person said to me something to the effect of, you're right, uh, we will reaffirm this understanding. Sorry this happened. This won't happen again. And, and going back to this issue of your personal space, it, it, explain to us again how you felt relative to Ms. Sanchez and your personal space during this encounter in February of 2023. My personal space on the Senate floor is my workplace. I do the business of the people, the people who are in this room, Flagstaff all the way down to Oracle. That's the people's seat. That's where I go to represent them. That's where they elected me to serve. I hold that place as a sacred position. And if someone comes in at me and is invading my space, they're not only infringing upon me, they're infringing upon my district and my people. We have to have respect in the Arizona Senate. And ma'am, if you could describe for the court just how close Ms. Sanchez was getting to you relative to your own personal space. I would say within three feet. And how would you describe the demeanor of her questions? The demeanor of her questions had a very uh, 
assertive, directive, forward-leaning air that made it apparent that it was my job to answer her. Would you describe it as hostile? Objection. That, uh, that I mean, it's out there now, yeah. but uh, sustained. Withdrawn, Judge. Just so we have a good, clean record, um, and I want to kind of just briefly help the court understand the, the physical differences between, between you and Ms. Sanchez. What is your approximate weight and height? I'm about five foot five, and I weigh about 125. All right, and, and, and you know, how does Ms. Sanchez compare to you in terms of physical stature? Ms. Sanchez is taller than I, uh, very athletic build, uh, weighs far more than I do. I want to go to two incidents that occurred in April of this year relative to Ms. Sanchez uh, going to your, your personal residences in uh, Tempe and Chandler. Um, just so we're clear, you have a, a home in Tempe you're getting ready to sell and then a home in Chandler you're getting ready to move into? That's correct. Those of us who uh, represent rural districts have to have two homes. I have a home here in Flagstaff I've had since 2015 and I have a home near the Capitol. For many years that home quote unquote near the Capitol has been in Tempe. We are selling that home and moving to a home in Chandler to be near the Capitol and that's what is ensuing right now. All right. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, did you receive notice sometime on April 18th that Ms. Sanchez was at the uh, Tempe home? Yes, I was up here at home in Flagstaff. We had a break from the Senate for about a week and a half or so. So I came home and then I received a text from my family member that showed a ring doorbell picture of Miss Sanchez on the Tempe home doorstep. I was immediately asked, who is this? and I explained to my family member, my husband, who it was. Right. And who was it? It was Miss Sanchez. Just give me one moment while the court reporter marks these exhibits here. Okay. is the, uh, you have a ring camera at your home in Tempe and also with the one in Chandler? Yes. Does Exhibit 2 depict the um, ring video footage from Ms. Sanchez being at your home in Tempe on April 18th? Yes. Uh, did you ever give Ms. Sanchez permission to go to your, your personal residence? No. All right. Did you ever suggest anything to her that she was invited to come by your personal residence? <coughs> no. Did you ever give her your Tempe address? No. Do you, do, do you publicize your Tempe address? No. When you saw Ms. Sanchez there um, at the Tempe residence, um, what did you do after that? I was alarmed and <coughs> I began to get advice from my leadership at the Senate and I started researching advice on what to do about having my private residence visited by someone who was expressly forbidden to approach me at the office. And what did you do next? I went about my business during the day and then I think not long after here, according to the exhibits, it is apparent that within an hour I received another text from my spouse showing that Ms. Sanchez was appearing on the ring doorbell footage picture at the Chandler house. I also got a text from an across the street neighbor at the Chandler neighborhood saying that he had been visited ostensibly by Miss Sanchez. And exhibit one depicts Miss Sanchez at the Chandler home? That's correct. 
Uh, what did you do after you learned that Ms. Sanchez had now gone to your Chandler home in addition to your Tempe home? After the two images came across my text phone, I was very alarmed and began to research even more what my options were. At that point, I uh, pursued the notion of getting a restraining order, uh, harassment injunction, injunction against harassment. And just so we're clear, did you ever invite Ms. Sanchez to come to your Chandler home? No. Have you ever published the address of your Chandler home? No. Is your personal privacy a concern for you as a member of the legislature? Absolutely, yes. Why is that? I'm a target, as all of us are. I have three colleagues here up from the Capitol to support me today. And Judge, if I could, I would like to move Exhibits 1 and 2 into evidence. Any objection, Mr. Hennessy? No objection. Okay, they will be admitted. Can I yes. see them? In the recent past, have you been, and Thanks. don't mean to suggest Ms. Sanchez had anything to do with it, but it just so the court understands your state of mind, in the recent past, have you been the subject of a death threat? Objection beyond the scope. Uh, res response. Uh, again, Judge, uh, part, part of our, our uh, burden here is to show that she was, in fact, alarmed, harassed, or annoyed. Uh, subject. Uh, I, I agree with that. Objections overruled. Uh, she has to be alarmed uh, personally under uh, the definition of harassment in 12-1809. Uh, uh, and, and again, not to suggest that Ms. Sanchez has anything to do with this, but have you recently been the subject of a death threat? Yes, I have been recently subject to a death threat 2022, July 4th, Congressman Eli Crane and I were in a parade in Sholo, Arizona, which is in my district. July 4th, later in the afternoon, an email came in over the website of the Trump store in Sholo saying, the sender of the email said he had Wendy Rogers' uh, head in the target crosshairs of his weapon, who he allegedly was posturing from Sonic Burger next door, said he was going to splash Wendy Rogers' bleepity bleepity brains all over the Trump store. I was immediately evacuated once that message came in. Later in the day on July 4th, I came home to Flagstaff. Six weeks later, it was determined by DPS, who has the oversight of my safety, that it was Donald Brown, who is a middle school teacher in the Tuna, uh, Tucson Unified School District. And Mr. Brown was subsequently indicted, is that correct? That's correct. And in fact, I believe he's getting ready. He entered a guilty plea and he's uh, due to stand for sentencing here in the next couple of weeks? Uh, my understanding is Donald Brown will be sentenced in Navajo County, I think in June, June 6th. All right, thank you very much. Judge, what I have here are exhibits uh, three and four relative to Mr. Brown's case. I would just ask that the court admit those, take judicial notice of them, just so the court understands the nature of the death threat uh, and that, you know, to show that, you know, Ms. Ms. Rogers does, in fact, take these issues very seriously. Any objection to those being uh, admitted? Absolutely, Your Honor. This is, far, this is setting aside far beyond the scope. We're now entering documents in this for the public record of something that never came up in the context of the petition. Uh, I, I agree. I'm not going to admit uh, these two documents. I, I believe that she's genuinely concerned for her safety. Okay. Th I don't thank have you, a problem Judge. with that. I, I, I don't need to read these. As I, long as you made the I point, heard Judge, her. I appreciate it. Um, has Ms. Sanchez ever uh, emailed you a request for an interview before? Not to my knowledge. All right. Has she ever made public records requests relative uh, to your role as a senator here in the state of Arizona? Yes. All right. Has um, she made other inquiries amongst your colleagues relative to your, your roles as a senator here in Arizona? I don't know. Judge, I believe that's all the questions I have. Okay, Mr. Hennessy, cross examination. Yes, sir. Thank you. Quickly, Your Honor, the one and two. I'm just going to make sure I have 
one and two, I think two was Tempe and one was Chandler. Uh, one. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, I wonder if I wonder if you can you take can that fine. microphone that's that. on. Maybe hard to hear your objections, but uh, <laughs> I, I can project it. Okay. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Senator Rogers. Good afternoon. A um, few things I want to cover just briefly that, that Council was addressing. Um, the address of your Tempe, your Tempe home and your Chandler home, did you buy those in a different name than your own? The uh, residences? I don't think so. Okay. So any public record that would exist regarding the transactions associated with either the Tempe residence or Chandler residence would include your name? Presumably. Okay. You... Uh, acknowledged, I, I believe, already that Ms. Sanchez is a reporter. My client's a reporter for the Arizona Capital Times, and he's at the Senate on a daily basis, correct? Correct. Um, are you familiar with the rules of the Senate governing members of the media? Yes. And I think you described uh, that the reporters can approach you after the gavel, correct? Correct. And the incident that you described taking place in January 2022 occurred after the gavel. Correct. So there was no violation of any rule there in Ms. Sanchez approaching you? Correct. I believe you also said that, I, I wrote this down, it's as is custom. In other words, it's custom that reporters would approach senators after uh, the gavel has come down to ask questions. Correct. correct? Okay. Um, so it sounds like really you just didn't appreciate her questions and you felt as though your personal space was being invaded. Is that right? Negative. You've conflated two notions there. The content is one thing, and the filling of my space being invaded is another, and that is what I have said I felt. Okay, great. L let's break that down. We've got the issue associated with that which she said, right, the content. You, that upset you, right? I don't recall what it was, but I did not think it respectful or uh, appropriate. But you understood that she was approaching you in the context of her position as a reporter who works at the state capitol. Affirmative. And then there was the issue about your physical space. That's different than your not appreciating the questions, right? Correct. All right. Uh, yeah, no, do it, uh, uh, you know, in your exhibit, defendant's, defendant's exhibit, yeah, defendant's one. Permission uh, to approach, Your Honor? Sure. All right, Senator Rogers, I'm going to hand you a document that's been marked as defendant exhibit one. I think you can take a look at that document. Yes. This is a document that you completed uh, on April 19th, 2023. That was your petition uh, requesting the uh, injunction against harassment, correct? Correct. And you filled this out yourself? Yes. And you signed this under penalty of perjury? Correct. All right. Um, you then proceeded to have a hearing at the court on April 19th, correct? I believe so, if that's the date of this, yes. Do you uh, recall the exchange that took place at that hearing? I do. Okay. document 
Exhibit Marked to Defendant's Exhibit 2, a transcript from the hearing that took place on April 19th. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions about your testimony that, that took place at the hearing on April 19th. Um, during the course of that hearing, um, how many times did you use the, when you're just, so, this, so just to set the stage, you showed up for a hearing on April 19th, you were here with the magistrate judge, and it was the two of you, and you explained to the, the magistrate judge the basis behind the petition, that which, which was contained in Defense Exhibit 1, correct? Yes. And you answered a number of questions, you explained yourself, and you explained your concerns to the magistrate judge in order to obtain the injunction against harassment, correct? Yes. All right. During that hearing on April 19th, how many times did you use the word fear? I don't recall. Well, there's an, a word, that's, word, that, word index at the back of Exhibit 2. Feel free to look it up. Do not see fear listed. Right. Um, uh, let's try a different word. How many times during the course of the hearing on April 19th did you tell the magistrate that you were afraid? I do not see afraid. How many times during the hearing on April 19th did you tell the magistrate judge that you felt intimidated by Ms. Sanchez at the events of the Senate? I didn't say intimidated, and I would not have said intimidated. Because you weren't intimidated? Intimidated connotes someone having an upper hand in a debate format, and that's not what that was. Okay, well, th then I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm confused. You were describing the difference, you were asked questions and described the difference between your height and weight, your physical dimensions, and the differential between the physical dimensions between, between you and Ms. Sanchez, and I'm trying to understand the purpose of that testimony, unless it was to suggest some manner of physical tim intimidation. Did you feel physically intimidated? I felt my space was being violated. That isn't necessarily synonymous with intimidation. Okay. I don't intimidate easily. Mm -hmm. um, how many times during the course of the hearing on April 19th did you uh, tell the magistrate judge And that for the record, it was actually a justice of the peace pro tem, mm -hmm. even sorry. though the, the media were representing it as a magistrate judge. It was actually a justice of the peace pro tem. All right. I apologize. That's okay. Me. That's all right. I, I just want to clarify that all right. possible misconception. Maybe I'll just call it a hearing and we'll be safe. Okay. <laughs> How many times at the hearing on April 19th did you tell the uh, justice of the peace that you believe that there were threats to your family I don't recall how many times during the course of the hearing on April 19th did you discuss the factual circumstances surrounding Donald Brown and a threat to your life I don't recall you can look at the word index it's in, it's oh, in there Go look at Donald the sure I don't see Donald okay you can also look up threatened to your family, too, as well. This, the word Thank that is very helpful that way. Mm -hmm. It's been marked as Defense Exhibit 3 mm -hmm. for identification. Do you recognize the document that's marked as Defense Exhibit 3? I do. Uh, this is a press release. Uh, did you author this document? Yes. I approved it. And there are quotes in here. Are those quotes things that you said? Yes. All right. And this is dated Thursday, April 20th. Correct? It is. Um, 
Let's see, some quotes of yours in here. Uh, I don't know this reporter personally. You said that, correct? I did. Uh, I don't know what she is capable of. You said that too, correct? Correct. That, she sh that you don't believe anyone in their right mind would show up uninvited to my home, correct? Right? I'm reading just to reconfirm. Wait a minute. This is, yes. That's correct. Um, and then finally, that last se sentence in that uh, second paragraph, that you, s you didn't, don't trust that this person would lash out and try to physically harm me in some fashion. Those are your words on April 20th, right? Yes. All right. And um, safe to say, and, and please refer to Defense Exhibit 2 if you need to, that you never told the judge pro tem about concerns about lashing out or physical harm. Is that correct? That's correct, however. There are uses by me of the word annoying, harass, harassed, harassing, and harassment. Just looking cursorily at this index of words. Well, so you, the, what you're saying there, the, the index of words, it's those words appear within the transcript. You don't know. You don't know right now whether you said them or the judge said them. Correct. I don't know, but I certainly would have and did think those words. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about words that we know you used. We <coughs> know, despite the fact that you didn't say anything about your personal space, you didn't say anything about threats to your family, you didn't say anything about concerns or fear or being afraid, you didn't say anything about Mr. Brown, I guess it was, if I recall his name correctly, uh, in, in, in some sort of an, an attempt at regard. Let's talk about the things that we know that you talked about. For example, you made it a point to talk about how much you wanted to make sure that this injunction went on Ms. Sanchez's record, whatever that means. And if you want to see it, page 15, lines 9 through 11, Exhibit 2. You made it a point to the judge to ask about whether the proceeding that you engaged on April 19th would go on Ms. Sanchez's record. So you don't want to talk about fear, you want to talk about Ms. Sanchez's record. May I address your question? Yeah, you can answer my question. What is your question? My question is, it's true that during the course of the hearing that took place on the 19th, you, the one word we know you did use and one phrase you did bring up was the concept of whether the proceedings would go against Ms. Sanchez's record. You made it a point to ask that question, correct? What word are you saying I used to convey such a concept? Well, page 15, lines nine, page 15, Lines 9 through 11. Miss Rogers, and this goes on her sort of record, so to speak, and that she has, okay, what implications does that have? And your question regarding that? That you made it a point during a proceeding, seeking an injunction against harassment, where you didn't talk about your personal safety, where you didn't talk about threats to your family, where you didn't talk about this Mr. Brown, you did make it a point to ask about the implications for Miss Sanchez, correct? I asked the judge, uh, the um, protest. The judge is fine. <laughs> a number of questions that day. One was what kind of implication this has in general. This was not a personal uh, sort of uh, aim at the defendant as you're portraying it. I also asked the judge about my addresses and okay. whether or not they should be entered into the public record because we just passed legislation recently, the governor signed the other day, that speaks to the danger of elected officials' addresses being in the public record. Okay, th I, you, you answered my question. No, I, may I complete no, it's not my you, statement? You answer Actually, your, your lawyer will have an opportunity to ask you redirect questions. Very so. well. Right. So uh, just, to, just to confirm, 
if I understand correctly, your questions regarding the record for Ms. Sanchez was your concern for her wanting to make sure that it didn't implicate her negatively. Is that your suggestion now? No. Okay. Um, and then, and actually going on page 15, uh, lines 20, line 23, page 15, under the top of 16. So the idea here, this is you speaking, so the idea here is for the person to learn their lesson and then leave the situation alone. So you made it a point to bring up wanting Ms. Sanchez to learn her lesson despite the, the fact that you didn't talk about your personal safety, correct? No. You didn't say that? That wasn't your question. You said you spoke to intent with your question of me. I will speak objectively to the statement, which, yes, I did say. And in that statement, I simply reiterated what I understood the court's ruling would have an impact on. What does a court do? A court teaches lessons, and that's all I was saying. Let's also talk about the scope of that which you intend, that the scope of which you were asking regarding the um, events that took place in, in, the, in the implications of this injunction. Um, the concern that Ms. Sanchez couldn't approach you at all, correct? I'm not sure the specificity of your question. <coughs> Page 14, lines 3 to 5. Ms. Rogers, so if I am five miles away at an event that a lot of us are at, she mm -hmm. cannot approach me, correct? That, again, was a question I had to sort of be coached by the judge in terms of what my parameters of safety would be. Because going back to ex Defense Exhibit 1, you had actually asked initially that Ms. Sanchez be banned from not only any residences, but also from the Senate floor completely. That's correct. On April 18th and April 19th, when there were visits that took place by Ms. Sanchez at the Tempe and Chandler residences, were you at either place? No. Was your husband at either place? Back and forth he was. At the time Ms. Sanchez ar arrived at each residence, was, Mr. was your husband there? No. Um, do you recall receiving an email from Ms. Sanchez on April 17, 2023, asking you for comment regarding the... Stand by, I had it written down. Give me the date again, please. Sure. April 17, 2023. April 17th, okay. Uh, an email asking about the latest subsistence and mileage report from your office. I do not recall that email. We were on break. I was up here. I was not checking my email. However, we do have an attorney at the Senate who apprises me of public records requests. So if it was one of those, he might have passed that to me. What is a subsistence and mileage report? A subsistence and mileage report, to my understanding, is a, uh, an accounting of what the Senate pays a senator for subsistence and mileage. So there's a report that your office would complete to submit for part of a request for per diem under the applicable Arizona statute? Presumably. And in order for you, you've been receiving per diem reimbursements, reimbursements during your time in the Senate. Yes. And those per diem reimbursements are based upon uh, the, the distance between Flagstaff and the state capitol. My understanding is they're based on uh, the fact that one has to have two homes and one has to commute, yes, from outside Maricopa County. Um, but nonetheless, the reimbursement, because you're the senator for Flagstaff, your per diem reimbursement and the mileage associated with that would be covering the distance between Flagstaff and Phoenix. When that travel is accomplished, however, when we are in session, we have to have accommodation near the Capitol, so it helps cover that expense as well. And that's the residence you have in Tempe that'll be moved to the residence in Chandler? That is where I hail from, yes, when I am near the Capitol. Okay. Between, you haven't moved into the Chandler home, correct? Correct. All right. Between Tempe and Flagstaff, which one of those is your primary residence? The one where you spend the most time? 
I'm sorry? Flagstaff is my primary residence. Okay. Did you recall receiving a text message from, uh, actually before I get to that, who's Kim Quintero? As I stated earlier, she is the Senate Public Relations uh, Liaison for the Senate Majority Staff. Do you recall receiving a text message, and presumably you had your phone with you even though you were on break, a text message from Kim Quintero on Monday, April 17, between the hours of 1.43 p.m. and 3.56 p.m. that was a cut and paste of a text message from Ms. Sanchez to Ms. Quintero that Ms. Carroll passed down to you? It's possible that I don't recall for sure. read the text message to you and we'll see if that helps me or something. I hand you a document marked Exhibit 4, take a look at the box that says hello. Hello, I want to talk to Rogers about some things she might really want to comment on. She recently purchased a house in Chandler, and there's some more information about the rumors of her residing out of district in Tempe. Also keeping that in mind, I'd like to ask her about per diem. Thanks. Kim's response, I don't know anything about that. However, I do know she won't want to comment. Nonetheless, I will screenshot your text and send it to her. Back from Ms. Sanchez, thank you, have to ask. And then uh, Ms. Quintero, I know, no worries. Later that day, Ms. Sanchez, please shoot me a text if and when she says no, so I can add. Not sure if this will be published today, but maybe. And then finally, back from Ms. Quintero, <coughs> 3.56 p.m., no reply. Suggesting that Ms. Quintero pass the text message on to you and you hadn't replied. Does that help you remember whether you received that message? This looks familiar, but I don't recall it specifically, honestly. Okay. So, as of April 17th, if in fact that message had come through, and you said it sound, looks familiar, you would have known that Ms. Sanchez was seeking, con seeking comment from you about your residence and also questions regarding Perdido, correct? Presumably. How many times during the hearing on April 19th did you tell the judge that Ms. Sanchez was looking into or investigating your residences related to Perdido? I wouldn't have felt that was relevant. When the judge was asking you about the normalcy associated with a reporter coming to a residence, you didn't think it would be important for the judge to understand your knowledge that in fact Ms. Sanchez was undergoing an investigation into your residences and your per diem that could then very well have explained why it was she was going to the residences. You didn't think that, that was something important for the judge to know? No explanation justified someone coming to my private residence whether or not I answer their inquiry on text. Um, how many times have you run for public office in the state of Arizona? Is that your objection relevance? I'll, I'll, I, I promise I'll tie it, Your Honor. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. Are we counting primary and general or any, cycles? Any time that there will be a name on a ballot. I will generalize that answer to say I ran in six, uh, I have run in six cycles. Okay. And during those cycles, I presume you had campaign staff. It would depend on the scope of the campaign, but I'm a frugal campaigner, so very few staff, if any. Did you go out and search for votes yourself? Affirmative. I've knocked on tens of thousands of doors, more than you can imagine. Did all those people invite you to knock on their door? Ah, I <laughs> went 
as a campaigner and they could have said to leave if possible. What I would do is leave my card and identify myself as someone who is campaigning for office. I was not seeking investigation into their affairs. And that's the key distinction for you there? An invasion of privacy is the key distinction. Uh, no, hold on a second. I thought what you said was so offensive to you was uninvited to your home. You said you not, what it was? I'm sorry. After being Ten told not to hold on. approach me. Hold on. You said tens of thousands of homes. You knocked on tens of thousands of doors. Yes. Were, and you weren't invited to any of them, right? Are you suggesting that a campaigner can't knock on voters' doors? You're the one suggesting that a reporter can't knock on a door. I am, because she was told to stay away from me, specifically she. I don't go to someone's door if they tell me to stay away. Right, What's that? Group exhibits are right. Fine. Chris, are we going to move that on? Not yet. I will. I mean, I can, yeah, at this, while I'm putting this together, move to admit that which has already been marked as a defense exhibits. Any objection? Yeah. No objection, Jeff. Okay. They'll be admitted. individual by the name of Nicole Garcia personally? I don't recall that name. Um, so because you don't know, don't know Nicole Garcia personally, you wouldn't know what she might be capable of, correct? Judge, I'm going to object at relevance again at this point. It, it's been established that Ms. Sanchez was investigating this issue relative to Senator Rogers' uh, residence, and we don't need to, to rehash the issue, so it's not only irrelevant, but it's cumulative. Response. Uh, I think we'll see that with respect to this particular uh, line of inquiry, it's exactly not cumulative. Uh, I'll overrule. Uh, I'm sorry, did, did you answer my question? I can't recall. Say again. Uh, because you don't know Miss uh, Nicole Garcia personally, you wouldn't know what she's capable of, correct? If I don't know someone, then I would not know what that person is capable of by definition. Um, did you ever, because you don't know Ms. Nicole Garcia personally, you never invited her to any of your residences, correct? I guess. So you didn't invite Nicole Garcia to your home in Tempe on April 21st, 2023? I wasn't at that home. I was up here in Flagstaff, so I have no idea what you're asking me. Well, I mean... It, did you invite anybody from Fox 10 News, either Nicole Garcia or anyone else from Fox 10 News, to visit any of your homes, either Flagstaff or Tempe or Chandler, on April 21st, 2023? Yeah, Judge, I have to re-raise this objection again. Unless it can be established that this other journalist was given a specific directive to stay away from Senator Rogers, I don't see how this is relevant. Well, the specific directive, as I heard it, was on the Senate floor. Um, I think the first directive that prohibited contact, period, was the ex parte injunction against harassment. Unless I heard it wrong. No, that's exactly correct, Your Honor. And, 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 and I don't exactly agree that which, which has been described about this prohibition in the Senate, but that's a separate issue. But certainly with respect to the, the hearing that took place on the 19th and the injunction, the only time residents ever came up 
was dur well was during the course of the petition that was filed and the injunction hearing, and that was the scope of the uh, no location. Uh, well, I think council's trying to bring up a point uh, regarding uninvited guests, and I'll I'll allow that. Thank you. So on April 21st, you didn't invite anybody from Fox 10 News, either Nicole uh, Garcia or anyone from Fox 10 News, to any of your three residences. I did not. All right. I'm going to hand you a proof exhibit, Mark Defense Exhibit 5, and ask you to please take a look at that. Do you recognize the photos that are on page 1, 2, and 3 of Group Exhibit 5? They represent the homes that uh, we own. Okay. So we've got... Uh, one of them is a photo of your Tempe home. Uh, and I, believe the te I, I believe the Tempe home actually depicts somebody walking towards the front door, correct? It appears that way. An uninvited person nonetheless, correct? Yes. We've established you didn't invite anybody that day, so you weren't there. An uninvited person, correct? correct? And then the other photos are of your Flagstaff home and of your uh, Chandler home, correct? Correct. And um, did you then... I assume, because we have uninvited guests to your residences, that you then proceeded to uh, file a petition for an injunction against harassment against individuals from Fox 10 News as well, correct? Incorrect. There's other questions I have, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, just the last thing, just the last group exhibit we've been done. Any objection to those last uh, photos being admitted? Well, the, the objection went over the box, Judge. Okay, so I'll admit them over objection. You. So if you could, unless you wanted to hold on to those exhibits, I'll oh, take them. Oh, yeah, I think that would be helpful, too. Okay. Uh, go ahead with redirect. Thank you. Did you ever have an encounter with Nicole Garcia where you said, you're dismissed? No. Did the Sergeant of Arms of the Senate ever tell Nicole Garcia to leave you alone? No. Did Senate staffers ever tell Nicole Garcia to leave you alone? No. Before today, did you even know that Nicole Garcia had even gone to your house? Houses, I should say? I had heard that a reporter went to all three houses, including this one up here. Right. Right. Did you know who it was? Maybe someone told me the name but I didn't dwell on it. Oh, but help us in, how is it different relative to Nicole Garcia and Cameron Sanchez? Nicole Garcia wasn't stalking me. Objection. Uh, overruled. Uh, yeah, look at those exhibits briefly, Judge. She has some. Senator Rogers, I'd like you to, uh, I believe my, my colleague started to read into the record portions of Exhibit 3, and just for the sake of context, I think it's important we get the full statement in there. So, um, you know, if, if you could see where I'm pointing to where it says, I didn't have any further issues, could you please read the remainder of that paragraph here on Exhibit 3 for the record? I'll just start at the beginning. Earlier in this legislative session, after the reporter repeatedly invaded my personal space at my desk in the Senate chamber, I requested that the sergeant, the Senate sergeant at arms and staff convey to the reporter that I did not want her to approach me, said Senator Rogers. Quote, I didn't have any further issues with this reporter until this week when she showed up at two of my valley homes multiple times. The latest attempted contact at one of my residences happened Wednesday night. I don't know this reporter personally, I don't know what she's capable of, and I don't believe anyone in their right mind would show up uninvited to my home at night. Therefore, I don't trust that this person would <coughs> lash out or try to physically harm me in some fashion, close quote. Uh, Ms. Rogers, uh, we didn't discuss that incident as it wasn't in your petition, but seeing as how 
uh, defense counsel has brought up this, this incident. Well, was there an incident on April 19th where Ms. Sanchez went back to the Chandler home at night? Yes. What happened then? I was out with uh, constituents uh, in Flagstaff for the evening. I went back to our Flagstaff home. My husband texted me. He said, here is another ring doorbell picture of said individual at night at our Chandler home. He was uh, so alarmed that uh, we, we talked then over the phone. This picture is uh, time stamped 1921, 721 on April 19th. And uh, he called me and he said, uh, my husband said, I will have to go back down to that home to make sure it's secure because I'm getting a really bad feeling about all of this. And Senator Rogers, just to clarify, this incident on April 19th where uh, Cameron Sanchez went back to the Chandler home in the evening, that occurred after you'd already gotten the ex parte injunction, correct? That's correct, but it had not uh, been served, as I recall. Judge, move to admit plaintiff's file. Any objection? Objection. Uh, plaintiff's five will be admitted. And uh, Colonel Rogers, do you have in front of you, oh, sorry, Senator Rogers. <laughs> Old habits die hard. So, uh, okay. Senator Rogers, do you have in front of you the transcript from the ex parte hearing? I believe it's one of the defense exhibits. Yes. Uh, and and ma'am, if we could uh, direct your, your attention to, uh, to page five. Um, and again, I just want to uh, you know, uh, re have you read out loud from the record some of what was said here. Um, so if you have page five starting on line 13, I believe that's the judge talking and then you respond. Uh, please admit, let me know when you get there. I'm here. Okay, if you could start reading with the judge's comments starting page five, line 13, and, and moving down into the first paragraph of your, um, uh, of your response. I am more concerned about the fact that she is showing... Uh, if you could back up just a little bit, I'm worried about overwhelming the record. Yeah. Thanks. You're going to blow out a court reporter's eardrums if you're not careful. <laughs> I am more concerned about the fact that she is showing up at your residences. I don't know that is that a standard practice for reporters to track senators at their residences. Do you know if that's normal? Judge, comma, to my knowledge, it is not normal, period. That is, at the point yesterday where my husband sent me those ring doorbell images, he said, who is this? And I immediately recognized her. So I called the Senate attorneys and I asked them and they said it was highly inappropriate. And I'll just go ahead. I, I just wanted the first paragraph, but I appreciate that. So uh, is it fair to say that you conveyed at least to the judge during the hearing that you felt that it was both I inappropriate and, and non-customary for a reporter to show up at your personal homes like that? Correct. And then going again to, there's a discussion later in the transcript, I believe at page nine, actually probably more so at the bottom of page eight, if I'm not mistaken. There was a colloquy with the uh, judge uh, as to whether or not to actually put the specific addresses of your Tempe home or your Chandler home on the actual uh, injunction against harassment, is that correct? Yes. And, and what request did you make of the ju judge relative to actually putting those specific addresses on there? Well, I actually asked her to sort of coach me on what the protocol was and what the options I had were. And she said, and I'm just remembering this in my head, she said, if we put your addresses on there, then if you have a problem with this person revisiting you, it's easier for the police to track where it is occurring. And I said, well, there's a conflict there possibly for me because this puts my addresses, all three addresses, out in the public domain, even more so than they already are. And, and, I, and so ultimately, uh, because of that concern that you'd expressed to the judge, did the actual specific addresses wind up going on the injunction itself? No, because her advice to me was, given what you have told me, Senator, I would say you probably shouldn't put them out there. Thank you, Senator. That's all the questions I have for you. 
Okay, you may step down. Uh, and just well, I'll let you redirect, re redirect. It's just very brief, Ron. Uh, otherwise, he'd wind up calling her during his case. So I'll, I'll allow it and allow you to uh, further redirect. Yes, Judge. Uh, the, the exhibits, defense exhibit one. Uh, I think they're all with uh, all the defense exhibits, sir. The petition. The this is the peti defense exhibit one for the petition. Sorry, defense exhibit one for the petition that you filed with the Justice Court on uh, April 19th, correct? Yes. All right. And so this is an affirmative document that you completed, you filled out, and you filed it with the court and as part of the court record, correct? Yes. On page two of exhibit one, you listed both of your addresses in a document that you filed with the court, correct? I was compelled to, yes. Compelled to? You com to? Who compelled you to fill this out? Who compelled you to put those addresses on there? You filled this out, which, pr which started the injunction procedure. You affirmatively put your home addresses on a document filed with the court on April 19, 2023. I filled out a form which required, to my understanding, me to put those addresses on there. Thank you. Any re -re uh, re redirect? No. no. Okay, you may step down. Uh, any other evidence you'd like to present? Yes, we'd like to call Cameron Sanchez. Okay. And raise your right hand. Do you swear that uh, the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, have a seat. Good afternoon, Ms. Sanchez. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. I don't believe you and I have ever had the opportunity to, uh, to speak before, unless I'm mistaken. Not yet. All right, well, it's good to finally meet you. Hi. Um, did you go home to your apartment Friday night? This Friday? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Were you aware that there was a process server uh, at the apartment waiting for you? No. You're, I'll strike that. If you could please pick up uh, Exhibit 4, or Defense Exhibit 4, I believe this is the text you sent to, uh, I believe, uh, is it Kim and Carol? And those may all be, oh, oh where'd they go? Oh, there they are. <laughs> There's just Thanks. Um, and, and just to be clear, uh, you have Defense Exhibit 4 in front of you, ma'am? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I won't read it directly, but, but you messaged Ms. Quintero indicating you had some questions relative to Wendy Rogers about potentially her living out of district. Uh, and Ms. Quintero's response was, I don't know anything about that. However, I do know she won't want to comment. Did I read that correctly, ma'am? Yes. And this colloquy occurred on uh, April 17th, correct? Yes. Wait, who said, uh, I know she won't want to comment? Uh, Kim. Kim Quintero. Kim, uh, yeah, okay. And if you could please refresh the judge as to who that is. She's the Senate Majority Communications Director. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I just didn't know if it was Ms. Sanchez who said that or Kim Quintero. Um, and, and you responded to this uh, response from Ms. Quintero saying, thank you, have to ask. Did I read that correctly, ma'am? Yes. All right. And so again, that colloquy with Ms. Quintero occurred on April 17th, correct? Yes. And it was the following day that you went to uh, Wendy Rogers Tempe home and to her Chandler home as well, correct? Yes. All right. So you went to both of those residences knowing that Senator Rogers did not wish to comment on this allegation that she uh, potentially lived out of district, correct? No. So you did not know that? No, I have no way of knowing if she wanted to comment or not. Kim just said she didn't reply. Well, I believe Ms. Quintero said, however, I do know she won't want to comment. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, but that's Kim's opinion, isn't it? Uh, well, ma'am, I'm not here to answer your questions, I'm afraid. You're here to answer my questions. But my question is, Kim Quintero had conveyed to you that Senator Rogers did not wish to comment on that topic, correct? She said she won't want to. So Quim, Kim Quintero told you she won't want to comment on this allegation that she lived out of district, correct? Yes, she did. All right. And knowing that, nevertheless, you went to Senator Rogers' Tempe home and then later to her Chandler home, correct? Yes, I did. In fact, you went to the Chandler home twice, correct? Yes. Who did you encounter at the Chandler home? I'm not sure, but there was a person working in there. 
Right. What did you say to him? I don't know exactly. I said hi. I asked if uh, Senator Rogers or her husband were there, and he said no. Mm-hmm. And I asked if they'd come back, and he said yeah. And I said okay, and then I left. Did you say anything else? I don't think so. We didn't talk much. I didn't really interview him. I mean, I knew he wasn't them. So your purpose in going to the Tempe home and the Chandler home was to interview Senator Rogers? No, not exactly. Well, you, you just said that you didn't want to speak to the electrician because he wasn't them. Right. So wasn't your purpose then to interview Senator Rogers or at least her husband? If they were there. All right, so again, your purpose was to go there to interview Senator Rogers or her husband, correct? Jackson asked and answered. Overruled. No, I didn't know if anyone would be there at all. It was not just to talk to them. Although I would have asked them questions if I'd seen them. Okay, so you're you're telling and us that. And, and, and oh, go ahead. Uh, I'd like her to finish that. Oh, please, ma'am. Answer. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please complete That's your okay. answer. Um, part of it was also to talk to neighbors, and just see it. Did you talk to neighbors? A few, yeah. So just to be clear, though, you went to both the Tempe home and the Chandler home, intending to interview Senator Rogers. After one, um, uh, she had a request had been made of you in the Senate to have no contact with her. Correct? Objection. That's the state's testimony. Uh, uh, well, she can kind of clarify it. I think. Okay. Pro- she probably knows best. She and Senator Rogers. So can you ask me again? All right. So you went to both the Tempe home and the Chandler yes. home with the specific intent of interviewing. Senator Rogers, despite having been told previously in February in the Senate that you should not have contact with Senator Rogers. No. You were not told not to have contact with Senator Rogers in February. I was not told that. You were never, what what were you told relative to Senator Rogers? I was told that she didn't want me to approach her at her desk on the floor. And so you thought that although you were told not to approach her at her desk on the floor, it was perfectly acceptable for you to approach her at her private residence in either Tempe or Chandler. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what Kim said. Well, sort of. Kim, can I say more? Please. So on the 28th, Joe Kubaki, who's the sergeant at arms, told me that Senator Rogers had asked him to tell me to not talk to her at her desk anymore. And I told Gary, my editor, and Dwayne and Colleen, my other editors. And Gary talked to Kim to ask what it was about. And Kim said, she can talk to her anywhere but the desk. So hallway's fine, committee room's fine, outside the Senate is fine. Did you ever approach Senator Rogers and say, I, you know, uh, I understand we shouldn't approach you at, at the desk, but may I have an interview with you in your office or at your home? I don't know that we talked after February 28th. Right. So, you, so you just elected to show up at both the Tempe home and the Chandler home unannounced, is that correct? Yes. Senator Rogers never invited you to, to either residence, correct? No. Are, are you friendly with Senator Rogers outside the Senate? No. on it briefly, you, you agree with me that there was another incident in January of 2022 where similarly you were told to, I guess, not have contact with Senator Rogers on the Senate floor? No. Please tell me what happened then. Okay, so it was January 19th, 2022. It was the start of last session, and I had been working at the Cap Nines for a couple months, but I hadn't talked to Senator Rogers before, so this was like our first interaction. And I went up to her and I said, hi, Senator Rogers, can I ask you about Senate Bill 1045 and Senate Bill 1046? Um, and she didn't, she didn't want to talk. She asked Joe something, Joe, the sergeant arms. And I waited. And then she said something along the lines of like, this is a private conversation or this isn't for you. And then she left. And I asked Joe if everything was okay. And he said, yeah. And I, I wasn't directed by staff to not talk to her. Did you ever talk to her again after that incident? Yeah, yeah. On Through, the Senate floor? Yes. When? I don't know all the times. I kind of talk to all of them every time we gavel out. Like, I go talk to senators every time. I didn't talk to her as much as probably most of the other senators because 
I didn't think that she would want to talk much. Could you tell me by name every other legislator in the state of Arizona whose house you have visited unannounced? I haven't. Now, my understanding is you've made several public records requests relative to Senator Rogers and, and her mileage and things like that, correct? Yeah. And this is pursuant to your investigation that uh, she uh, allegedly doesn't live in the district? Yes. All right. Does the First Amendment give you permission to trespass on private property? No. Did you ever, like, Google, does the First Amendment allow journalists to trespass? I have never Googled that. Mm. Just so we're clear, did you think that you were welcome to uh, uh, either go to the Chandler home or the Tempe home at any point in time? I didn't know that I was welcome or unwelcome. We've never talked about it. But despite your private, your, your previous interactions with Senator Rogers, it's your testimony that you had no idea as to whether or not she would have uh, uh, welcomed you to her private residence in Tempe or Chandler? That wasn't really my goal. I didn't know if she would or wouldn't, but I didn't really have that goal in mind. Your Being goal, welcomed. Your, your goal was to go there unannounced and ask questions of her, correct? In part, if she was there, it would have been convenient. Are you capable of asking Senator Rogers questions of places other than her private residence in Tempe or her private residence yes. in Chandler? Yes. Yes. Have you attempted to do that? Yes. When? I don't know all the times. I know I asked her a question once on January 24th because of text that I reviewed. Anything else? Um, I've sent email requests. Anything else? Not off the top of my head. Okay. Were any of those requests responded to? Just once. January 24th, that's why I remember. And what was the response? She said, I don't know. All right. So none of those responses or lack of responses ever communicated to you that Senator Rogers would have welcomed you showing up at her homes in Tempe or Chandler, is that correct? Her behavior never indicated that. Okay. Uh, any questions, Mr. Hennessy? Well, I mean, if you want me to do my direct, essentially do my direct examination of her now, you or can. Do you want me to wait until plaintiff closes. You can. Or e either way. Your ch your choice. How, however you want to handle is fine with me. Um. We'll we'll wait. We'll okay. Sort of All right. You may step down. Yeah, okay. and Judge, we would move to call uh, the witness remotely, Mr. Keith Carter. And what's... He was the electrician at the Chandler residence when Ms. Sanchez was there. Okay, and I understand he may be available by Zoom? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Uh, do you have any comment about that, Mr. Hennessy? Uh, I mean, it's beyond... Well, yes. It's, first of all beyond the scope of that which is alleged in the petition, but more importantly, and, and we would address this, I address this in, in closing, Your Honor, the statute requires harassment of a person. Not their, mean, not their electrician? Not their electrician. And, and the case law <laughs> is pretty straightforward that harassment has to be of the individual that's complaining of the harassment, not of someone else there. And therefore, Mr. Carter, I believe this, they said his name was, whatever, the electrician's name, 
any testimony he would offer is irrelevant to the petition. Well, I'll submitted. allow him to testify, but you can object to any of those questions. Uh, I assume, Mr. Fishbach, that you're going to uh, question him about harassment of Senator Rogers? Well, uh, correct, Judge. And, and another element, uh, well, I'll, I, I can keep it brief, Judge, put it that way. I, I, don't, I don't need to rehash uh, what we've already established in the testimony already. Okay. I'll allow it. You can certainly object to relevance in any, uh, you know, ob object to any question. Thank you. Oh, I've never seen that TV on. How are we going to do this? Is this going to be up on this TV? How's that going? Oh, okay. And Keith, uh, what's his last name? Carter. Carter, okay. Can you uh, turn on your video? Okay, and go ahead, Mr. Fishbach. All right, um, Mr. Is he, is he been sworn in, Judge? Oh no, that's a good point. Raise your right hand, sir. Hold on one second. I have my right hand. Okay. Uh, do you swear that the yeah. testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, you can put your hand down. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Carter, sir. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief, and I just want to establish. Uh, okay. It's my understanding that you were, uh, you're an electrician, correct? Yes. And, sir, you were working at the Chandler home uh, of Senator Wendy Rogers on April 18th when Ms. Sanchez uh, came by? Correct. All right. Uh, did you do anything uh, suggesting to Ms. Sanchez that you were inviting her onto the property? No. All right. What did Ms. Sanchez say to you during your interaction with her? And tell us how that occurred. Well, I'm going to object to foundation. Okay. I'm not sure it's been established that this individual knows Cameron Sanchez. Uh, do you know Cameron Sanchez, uh, Mr. Carter? I only, I would only recognize him essentially that I was shown that was at her for that day. I did not know her name or who she was. I can, in fact, I could lay some foundation. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carter, sir, did uh, when you were working at the Chandler home on, on the 18th of April, did, did, did somebody uh, approach the home? Yes. All right. What did they say to you? Uh, asked if Wendy or Hal was around. And what did you say in response? I said no, that they were not. All right. What did she say? What did the, what did this, and was this individual male or female? Female. Could you describe her physically? Um, dark hair, um, height wise, maybe somewhere around five six, five seven. I'm not sure about that, but I was basically in working in a room and I could see the front door. I didn't approach the door, I could just see her from the angle I was at. All right. And did she identify herself? She did not. So after she inquired whether or not Senator Roger or, or, or her husband were present, what happened after that? He asked me when they might be back, and I said, Hal just left. He said he would be back after a while, and that I, uh, or we'll call him Mr. Rogers, um, would be back and be there today at all. All right. What happened after that? He said, thank you, and, and she asked me, she said, is it safe? Kind of struck me kind of odd. Is it safe? But I said, yes, it's safe. And then she turned around and walked away. At any point, did this individual identify herself? And no, she did not. All right. And I believe you described her in terms of um, height, hair color. Uh, can you give us an approximate age? Oh, I would say maybe early 30s. And uh, at, at any point, did you do anything to signal to this individual that she was welcome on the property? Um, I did not. That's all the questions I have, sir. Uh, anything? Mr. Hennessy? Uh, no, I have no questions for this witness. Okay. My same objection stands, but no, I have no questions for this Okay. All right. We're all done with you, Mr. Carter. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, anything else, uh, Mr. Fishbach? Yeah, like Judge, I would, I would like to have Martin admitted um, uh, Senate Bill 1061, which was just uh, signed by the governor, uh, and it actually, uh, uh, I mean, it, it I mean I'm aware of it. It's regarding uh, uh, confidentiality of elected officials' addresses. Co correct, and I, and I do think it's relevant in terms of public policy uh, issues here that we're, and so I, I would like to have it marked and admitted and have the court take judicial notice of it. Uh, I'll take judicial notice of it. Any problem with that? Well, well yeah, the, the, I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it's a law, so. I, I understand it's a law. It's a law that's not even in effect yet, Your Honor. That's true. It's not in effect so yet. So the relevance with, with respect to these proceedings, there's some sort of suggestion as though there's something untoward that occurred by virtue of a law that's not even in effect yet. It, it is true that it's not in effect yet until September or so. I, I agree with that, Judge. But I, So I, how is it relevant? I, I think know. the fact that both the, the legislature uh, and our, our governor, who is of the opposite political party, saw fit to put this law in place. And, and, and I think it goes to the fact that it, it is alarming, it is harassing, it is annoying. When, when I mean, he can, he can argue uh, those policies. I, I, I can't help but take judicial notice of the fact that such a law was passed. Right. Judge, uh, plain press. So we've been going about an hour and a half. Why don't we take a, a ten minute recess? I could go with five minute recess <laughs> if we could vote. Uh, why don't we reconvene at uh, 3.05. All rise. Anybody needs to use the restrooms, go straight out, leave the first, and then right down. Well, not there. Yeah. So, but yeah, I can't appreciate that.